much. Before I start, um, what I'm going to share today, I just like to give the glory to God for giving me the opportunity to stand here before you guys and to um, hopefully give you guys a word from God that will help you guys better yourselves and um, have a happier life. And um, yeah. <laughs> God is good all the time. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. So um, it is Valentine's Day, so um, I just wanted to create this little um, little activity to share with you guys today. So I do have two chocolate verses that I want to give out to someone um, who will answer my questions in return. So um, <laughs> if the first question is, um, if you can say a Bible verse to me that has the word love in it. Do you have one now? Job 316. Who wants to love the world again in the new song? church song that has the word love in it. I swear we just sang a song with the word love in it in worship. <laughs> Reasons and let's just start making a difference. 
If you choose not to take the easy default in life of blaming and making excuses, you will be so much better in life. Only because eventually you have to the reason like the reasons that you are looking for divert you from accomplishing that goal. But eventually, step by step, you do accomplish that goal. It just depends whether you want to take the long road or go directly, you know what I mean? So, um, blaming is contagious. And it does have this tendency to affect the whole culture, a whole environment. And if blaming is in any church or any team or any DNA, then it's going to pollute that culture. In the Bible, there's a man holding a banquet, and Jesus tells the story of how every man had the reason not to go to the party. This is in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 20. One of the invited guests that were meant to come to the banquet said that he couldn't come, he couldn't come because he got himself into a business. Um, he had just bought a cow and was going to get that business started. Another one said that he had just bought a piece of land and he had to go get it ready. And the other said that he just got married and blamed it on his wife. Um, there was a separate, <laughs> yeah, there was a separate pre um, preaching that my um, youth pastor at school um, preached on and he used the same Bible verse and he said that these, it was also on excuses and he said that all these reasons so one guy saying that he bought a cow and had to go check on the cows that he had just bought is an, is an insulting excuse. Because you don't buy a cow and then go to check for it. You go check the cow and then you come and then you buy it. But this guy says, oh, I'm going to go. I had just bought a cow, so I had to go see if it's working, if it's fine. You know? The next person says, I had just bought a piece of land and I have to go check the land. So the same thing with the cow, you don't buy a piece of land and then check its quality. And so back in the days he said that um, it's not just like going to look at the land. You have to actually, it's a long process. You have to go check the soil, check if, it's, um, if it bears good fruits, if it, if it has the right um, you know, environment for what you're trying to do, farming, housing, on that land. And the last one was that a man just got bar uh, married and blamed it on his wife. Um, the pastor that was sharing said that this was the most insulting excuse out of all of them because you don't plan a banquet. Banquets were massive back then in the Bible times. So you don't plan a banquet if one of your friends is getting married because that's another banquet, you know what I mean? You don't plan a cousin's 21st and then there's another cousin's 21st because then it just conflicts between the family. So, like, that's the thing about excuses is that it can, it does hurt when people make excuses but you've given them time and, like, you've already warned them. Jesus is coming and he's coming to prepare a feast for you. And when he comes, it's going to be insulting if you said that you spent your whole life, oh sorry God, I was doing this, I was doing this. Um, I had no time in my whole life spent to prepare for your banquet, to put, it, put time aside for you. You know what I mean? <coughs> so, um, the key verse that Brian Houston said was in this, um, in this, in all these verses, was Luke chapter 14 verse 18. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. In other words, they all became polluted. They all together became polluted. And the NIV version says, but they all alike began to make excuses. Um, so, um, what he was trying to explain was that because one person said it, suddenly more than one person had reasons not to go to the banquet. So it does affect other people if you decide like, if you start making excuses. Um, the thing about blame is that if you get into one, if it gets into one department of the church, it can affect the other departments of the church. Um, so if you say, if youth is constantly not getting together, and like um, 
not working together as a team, it can affect our worship team. Because our youth team is basically our worship team, you know what I mean? We are all one body of Christ. If one part is affected, then the rest is affected. If one is not doing its job so well, then it affects the other parts of the body that's, you know, Amen. that has to try and pick up. So, um, some things about blame. Responsibility, of course, is accountability. Oh, responsibility, then of course, accountability is accepting responsibility. Blame projects. Projectors forcefully project whatever is in them onto a screen. There are some people out there who live their life like this. Blame does that, it projects. It so easily covers our faults by simply pointing the finger at somebody else. People don't want to confront themselves, will usually project their own issues onto someone else. The Psalm 15, verse 3 in the message says, Don't hurt your friend, don't blame your neighbor. So just because you feel like you have some issues or like you feel threatened by other people, doesn't mean you should go around hurting other people with your words or saying that you shouldn't do this. And you know, that kind, of, that kind of thing where it says, because you did this, I shouldn't look so bad kind of thing. Yeah, so um, the next point was blame is self-justifying. So justified is a legal term, and what it means is free from guilt. An example of being justified is that Jesus took accountability for our sins, then took the cross, therefore justifying us. So. God freed us from our guilt. But what really is not pretty is self-justification. It is when we continually, ju continually justify everything that we do. Saul in the Old Testament was a master of self-justification. Samuel, who was a prophet, gave him one instruction. instruction. Don't go to battle and don't give an offering till I come back. Samuel was gone for seven days, and seven days went by, and Samuel still hadn't come back. So Saul takes things into his own hands, even though he was given clear instructions. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 11 to 14. And Samuel said, What have you done? Saul said, When I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered together at Mishmash, and this is where Saul justifies himself. Then I said, the Philistines will not come down at me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept my commandment of the Lord, your God, which he commanded you. For now, Lord, for now, your Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. So, if Saul had listened to um, to Samuel, then he would have had his kingdom established. But because he watched it and took things into his own hands and wasn't patient and didn't like listen to the Lord. Um, now his kingdom will be removed from him. And the rest goes on to say, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man for his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be commanded of, over his people. So God was going to raise up David, then command him to be commander over his people. This, this is all about leadership. And so Saul, Saul says, said, because this happened, and because this happened, that happened, and so this happened, and that's self-justification. <laughs> because self-justification is like kind of looking at chain events. So because this person did this, this, and that person did that, and this person did this, so I felt like I needed to take control and like try and get things my way, and so I busted in and continued that. What's changing and um, <laughs> and so yeah that's that's how it goes um, and um, self-justification 
only then becomes a hindrance to becoming or stepping into all that God has for you. Um, blame is excuses. If you accept the rationalization of a problem, then you accept the problem. If you were like me and was like, what's a rationalization? Um, rationalization is, um, is kind of like basically justifying. So trying to understand logical, like logical reasons for why this happened. Um, in simpler terms, if you accept the justification of a problem, then you accept the problem, not the solution. Um, even though rationalizing may make a whole lot of sense, it just doesn't help you. It's pointless to rationalize things you have no control over. So, understanding a problem is not solving a problem. Um, what you can change is you. What I can change is me. So let's not live on excuses. 38 years a man has been living beside healing waters because others always beat him to it. And Jesus asked him um, what you would think is a silly question. And that is, do you want to be made whole? Now that, now that man laying besides the water for 38 years had every reason not to move and do what he would love to do every excuse not to move forward. So this man was sick, but he laid 38 years besides the water. I think he was blind or um, disabled. So he didn't have the physical ability to move forward into the water himself. And no one would help him because back in the days, no one really wanted to help the poor or the sick. Um, that's why Jesus stepped in and started breaking rules and everything like that. Um, and so yeah, that man for 38 years laid beside the um, healing waters, but had every excuse not to move forward or change his life or um, make a difference. And so the moment he was made whole, all the excuses disappeared. So Jesus healed this man and now he had the ability to see, the ability to move, the ability to act. And um, now he has no reason to not go on fulfilling God's purpose, a life of victory and a life of overcoming. So I ask you guys today, do you want to be made whole? Because wholeness comes with responsibility. And then comes accountability, and accountability is leadership. So we all have the power to become leaders, um, whether big or small. Um, leadership can be for anyone and everyone, any age, and um, any cultural or appearance. Um, so, I understand that we all have the ability to move, the ability to see, and the ability to speak. So we shouldn't have any excuse of not being able to take on what God gives for us. You know what I mean? Like Asi said when she gave me <laughs> when she gave me tap 16, she said, Lupe, are you ready? And instantly in my head popped, oh. Wow, I have school homework and I have all this other stuff to do. All these excuses come and I, see, I know Asi sees her because she, she watches me. She's like, look Ben, are you ready for tap 16? And I'm like, um. And she's like, look Ben, I'm speaking in the future. You should be ready. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> That's how our response, well, how our response kind of should be towards God. If God says, look Ben, are you ready to take on money by get for you? I should be like, yes. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like we should, we have the ability. There's a Bible verse that says God never puts on you more than you can handle. Amen. Amen. So that's what I mean. If God gives you a task, it's not impossible. It's there for you to grow and to, you know, step out of your comfort zone, which is what our youth is trying to do. Guys, no lean comfort zones. <laughs> Comfort zones, deeper comfort zones. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's how it. Like, yeah, just just taking responsibility over what God has given you, which is our talents and our physical abilities, and um, just taking accountability for our actions. So if we say no to what God has to, or for, to what God has given us, and then we fall down and feel pain, 
like you can't blame someone else and say, oh, I fell down because this person said that I shouldn't say yes. It's all you. And um, yeah, just learning to take accountability, saying, yeah, that was my mistake. Next time I will say yes, God. Next time I will take on what you have in store for me. And um, through that, you will grow into a leader. Yay! Okay. So, yeah, just to finish it off, um, yes. It is easy to slip back into finding reasons, excuses, and things to blame it on, but we should learn leadership, which is accountability, and which is accepting responsibility. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.